Can you share with me something about some of the ancient practices that you see in relationship to creativity and imagination? Yes, well, you know, um, Vanessa and her colleagues have been drawing on ancient Christian and Jewish reading practices um, to awaken their imaginations and the imaginations of their listeners. Um, and the kinds of practices that we're talking about are things like Lexio Divina, Pardes, um, practices, some, sometimes medieval people, medieval Christians thought of reading as the first rung of a ladder that stretched up to heaven, that you could, you could climb up to God, that the first rung of the ladder was reading, and that, you know, after you read a text, um, you would begin to meditate on it and bring all the resources of your intellect to bear on it. Um, out of that meditation, um, medieval Christians thought prayer would naturally arise, that you would naturally turn to God in prayer. So prayer is the third rung of the ladder. And then the fourth rung of the ladder, the top of the ladder, would be an experience of God's presence, a sense of, of God's reality. Um, other readers thought about the ladder as like a ladder you might lower into a well so that the first, the top of the ladder, the first rung is the historical literal meaning of the text. Um, and then the next rung of the ladder would be the moral meaning, yeah. um, the, the meaning of how this text applies to my life in this time. What does this text call me to? The, the next rung of the ladder is allegory, or you know, what do the words symbolize? Do the words mean more than the, you know, than the words themselves? Is there, are they pointing beyond themselves to some other meaning? And then the deepest meaning would be the mystical meaning, mm -hmm. the meaning that, again, draws you closer to God. Um, and so um, that's a practice that's very easily adapted to reading lines from Harry Potter or other um, more contemporary sacred texts that are meaningful to our young people. Um, to think of, you know, I think the main thing is that many meanings are possible and that we can keep going and going deeper and deeper and keep excavating meaning, keep excavating um, meanings for our lives. Um, another practice um, that uh, we've made some use of is the practice of creating what medieval people called a florilegium, a, a flower garden of quotations from different works. And so, you know, it's a it's a collection of of lines, favorite lines, you know, from the Bible, from um, you know the fathers, from various spiritual texts um, that medieval people would create. Um, they would write down, you know, like we do in a notebook, writing down our favorite lines. And then once you've done that, you have a new text um, and you can read through it. And the, the lines are going to mean something different because now they're in relation to other portions of the text. Um, and so investigating those and really getting into the intersection between these um, various quotations and how they sound different and how they mean differently um, when they're placed next to each other is another practice that we that we really like. Um, sacred imagination um, is a practice that I believe Vanessa and Casper learned from James Martin, the great Jesuit writer, who taught them to place themselves in the text and to try to use all their senses figure out what it smells like, what it sounds like, what it feels like, but also to put themselves in the character and to see what it feels like in someone else's shoes. Um, maybe someone you admire, maybe someone you don't admire. That's maybe even the more important ethical practice. Um, and to imagine yourself in the story and to ask what kinds of ethical, spiritual choices you would make as a character in that story.